Distressed concrete members are normally prefabricated before the installations on the construction site. It can be pre-tensions or post-tension. Pre-tension member involve stressing the tendon first before casting, while post-tension member involve casting of the concrete before the pre-stressing. A typical pre-stressed concrete member starting from its fabrications until it is put into full service will undergo various stages of the loading as given here. The table here shows the stages of loading which is divided into the initial, intermediate and final stages. The initial stage will be during the tensioning of the steel tendon. It is when the tensile stress in the steels is being transferred into the concrete as the pre-stressing compression force. The second stage will be the intermediate stage. It is normally associated with the loads during the handling and transportations as well as during erections of the pre-stressed members. The final stage of loading will be at the service stage during the operations and also at the ultimate stage during the extreme event. These stages of loading needs to be taken into consideration while designing for the pre-stressed members. Due to the activities involved with the pre-stressed concrete members at various stages, different kinds of external load may add onto the members. If it is not properly designed, the member may pass in the service state but fail during the initial or intermediate stage. Failure of the pre-stressed member at any stage of loading is not desirable and the pre-stressed concrete system is not workable under such circumstances. Among these three stages, the critical stages for the serviceabilities are identified. It is basically known as the transfer stage and also the service stage. The transfer stage is related to the initial stage, while the service stage is related to the final stage of the loading. These are the descriptions for the transfer stage. The transfer stage is the stage immediately after pre-stress is being transferred to the concrete. At this stage, the pre-stressing force is at its maximum while the external load is at minimum. At this initial state, the pre-stress members is yet to be used to sustain the service load. The external load now is its self weight. Therefore, we can consider the external load as a minimum condition. At the transfer stage, there will be immediate losses take place. The long term losses or time dependence losses is yet to be take place. And normally, to speed up the construction process, the concrete elements are being pre-stressed before its mature age. Therefore, at the transfer stage, the concrete is at the young age and with low strength. All this need to be taken into consideration to check the members to pass at the transfer stage. Next, we look into the service state. It is basically after the time dependent losses take place. At this stage, the loading stage is at the final stage. The pre-stressed concrete members is basically used to sustain the service load. Therefore, for the analysis at the service state, 
full service load will be applied. Because of the time dependent losses, the pre-stressing load is at the minimum. And because of the service load, the external service load will be maximum. Bear in mind that at the service state, the loss calculated also include the immediate losses caused by the pre-stressing force. The total losses on the member will be the summations of the short-term and the long-term losses. For a typical pre-stressed concrete members, checking for the transfer stage and the service state will be sufficient. However, for certain cases, some intermediate loading such as special conditions during handling and transportations or erections of the precast element may become critical. Under such circumstances, special attentions may be put into the intermediate case also. The rationale is we need to ensure that the precious members are not to fail at any of these stages.